This is Gene Delisio with a featured sports interview from WDLB and WOSQ. One of Marshfield High School's most successful athletes was Gary Varsho, who played baseball and football at Marshfield High School in the 1970s then played college baseball at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh before embarking on a career in professional baseball. Gary played in the major leagues for nine seasons with the Chicago Cubs, Pittsburgh Pirates, Philadelphia Phillies, and Cincinnati Reds, and was inducted into the Marshfield Tiger Athletic Hall of Fame in the fall of 2008. Well, obviously, I think it's the people that you associate with here, uh, teachers, especially you know all the coaches that have come across. And like I said before, you know what, they, all the leadership that I've gotten from them over the years kind of take with me in the job as being the bench coach and uh, some of the lessons that I've learned. So, I mean, I think it's a great acknowledgement, especially the people that were here tonight, a lot of friends, a lot of people that knew me very well. And it was a, it was a great ceremony because obviously it brought back a lot of memories and obviously having a lot of people back. So the Bill Berries, the Pika Pleans, uh, the guys who are very instrumental in my career were here tonight and I meant a lot to me. So uh, great seeing the teachers, great seeing friends. And for me personally, being inducted with Dave Buss and Julie Jansen, uh, them being here tonight was very important. So it's always nice to see some past history and understand what other people have gone through. And so it's a great night. Tell us your thoughts about playing baseball at Marshfield, what that meant to you. One of the time you're dealing with Bill Berry and Graham Olson, uh, it's always a momentous <laughs> occasion. Uh, coming through here with the crew that we had, you know, guys who played a lot of baseball with me, it's Tom Rickman, Doug Olson. Uh, those are the two guys that every year we, we were the guys sort of to be on the team. And uh, we were a program that was, you know, trying to develop with Graham Olson being the head coach, Bill Berry being the JV coach. And we really had a, a very good time. It was one of those fun times during the year where we had a lot of guys come out and ended up just striving, trying to beat Stevens Point. That was the goal. I mean, to go to state tournament was way beyond just to try to beat Stevens Point, and we did as seniors. So uh, George Roman always had a good team over there, and uh, I know Tom Rickman hit a home run, Doug Olson hit a home run that day, and I think Brian Hurt could pitch a great game for us. So those are kind of the memories that you take back with you and the guys that you're, you're acquainted with all the time playing baseball, and obviously carried over to the American Legion. But uh, for me, the baseball team was obviously a real great time of the year. That was the sport that I had something to do with a little bit. I was somewhat decent at it, but it was fun. And fun playing with your friends and fun playing with the guys that you grew up with. Any other highlights that you can think of? You mentioned beating Stevens Point. Some other memories you have of playing baseball here? Well, obviously, just playing, period. But the guys who I played with up, up in Antigo, you know, they had a tremendous pitcher up there that we always tried to beat, and Antigo had a good play. But when you're dealing with Bill Berry, you know, I had Bill Berry as my JV coach, and I remember the times that we were up in Merrill playing and we were getting beat, and we got beat pretty poorly in late innings. And he sat us all down and basically he said, you know, some of you guys ought to think about going off a track next year <laughs> because you're not much of a baseball player. So uh, having Bill as a friend and having him being around basically uh, all the time, we were together in Little League. He was a part of the Parks and Rec program, and I was sort of always at the ballpark with him. And uh, Graham Olson was a big, big part of that as well. So I grew up with the Barry Olson regime. And obviously the high school part of it just carried it was the last piece of that. Uh, but playing for Bill and Graham all the way through and just playing a lot of baseball for them all the way through the city of Marshall, you know, growing up with them, they saw me from a little guy on, grow up to be uh, a fairly decent ball player here, and obviously the, all the things that have happened after that. But uh, they took a lot of special pride, and I, today was a, a great day for Bill and I, him being here, and uh, shared a lot of memories. Tell us about that, that goal you had, because people always talk about that, the fact that you were so focused on playing baseball as a career, a guy who certainly was a good high school player but was not a real big guy, and so consequently people thought that was kind of far-fetched that a guy from Marshfield, Wisconsin, that's not real big, would play Major League Baseball. But tell us about how you stayed focused on that goal and what that meant to you during the high school years. Well, I think Dale Yakaitis came along, and obviously him being at junior high uh, and him being an Oshkosh grad, 
had a lot to do with me basically getting myself going. Uh, you know, talking to Graham Olson and as my guidance counselor and telling him that I was going to make baseball a career, all four foot two of me as a sophomore, uh, was kind of like, okay, that's great, but what are you really going to do for a job? I just thought I was going to play baseball. It was the only thing I wanted to do. And obviously following the Brewers and all Major League Baseball and going down to the games and getting all the paraphernalia and bringing it back and emulating all of my heroes in the game, um, that's the only thing I really had my idea of doing. And as you grow here in town, I mean, I just didn't see myself doing anything else. I mean, obviously I wanted to be a teacher and I enjoyed that part of it, but the whole objective was to play in the big leagues and convincing people that that was going to happen what ended up transpiring was Dale Yakites basically got my foot in the door in Oshkosh. And he told me about the program, got a hold of Russ Tiedemann, and things kind of trickled. The snowball effect that ended up having there playing for a really good program. But you know, I think as people dream and people want to do things in their life, they see themselves in a position someday of playing in, on, in front of the big crowds and the big lights. And uh, I never really have lost that dream. I don't know. I can't explain it. It's just one of those things that you just imagine with as a little boy all the time. And you know, now as a bigger little boy, I'd really like to manage a big league club and play in the World Series. So, I mean, I don't think those dreams ever die with me as far as being in the game of baseball. You came from a family where baseball certainly was quite important. Tell us about growing up in that atmosphere where baseball was such a big part of the family. Well, my father was a very good baseball player along with my uncles. And playing in the Wood County League, the Yellow River League, uh, obviously my dad playing in the Army and had a chance to go to San Francisco Seals. My mother being from Auburndale and listening to the Johnny Higgs stories and all the Auburndale rivalries between them and Hewitt and Millador. That's all we talked about. It. That's one thing with the Varshals. You can, you can talk about two things, baseball and deer hunting. They can cover both those topics, topics very well, but baseball is always a priority. And my dad always talked about it. And he'd come home and play catch with me and share those times at the ballpark. And he'd end up never pushed me to play the game. And that was one of the easiest things. But just we always played at home. My brother Jimmy, my brother Dale, we'd get up against the garage door and play. And it was a family that really just cared about the game of baseball a lot. Growing up in Roselleville, Wisconsin, next to the ballpark there for a while when we lived, uh, you just showed up to the ballpark and whoever showed up played. You know, whether we had four or 40, it doesn't matter. We're just going to play a game today. And the same thing happened when I got here. Um, showed up at Oak Street, whether it was a game or not, and whoever showed up, we went up playing. So one of the things that we did in this town that probably doesn't happen anymore is Tom Rickman over from the uh, – west side i'm over on the east side or whatever i was on the west side he's on the east side he got his team together i got my team together and before we played our little league games at night we ended up playing at the ballpark at nine o'clock and we had our own world series and our own teams and graham olsen gave us equipment to play and he would recruit i would recruit my own players so this is what happened in this town at that time uh and my family was a big part of that. They just stimulated me to play catch and play ball. And so I just ended up being at the ballpark a lot. Do you look back on some of your experiences and some things you learned here and see how it translated to Oshkosh or your major league career? Well, I think being here in a small town with big dreams, uh, pushing the envelope for me to be able to go to a little bigger city like Oshkosh. God forbid, that was a huge, huge step for me and being homesick and trying to get through that. But you know, being here and, and going through the, again, I go back to the teachers that have taught me, all the football coaches, all the basketball coaches that had me pushing, persevering, grinding it out. You're not going to get anything unless you work hard, whether that's at school or on the field or on the court. This is just what I learned. You know, I just took those lessons that I, those guys did for me. And I was very blessed at a junior high program that Bill Kramer, Denny Chris, Bill Fiebre, Dale Eukaitis, uh Rod Idlebus. We had, a, we had some really good peak complaint, had some really good coaches, Wayne Hamlin. So I was pretty blessed being around a pretty good cast that pushed kids to be better. And uh, obviously it transferred through t from our to senior high program. But those lessons as a little boy learning that the only way you're going to get better is to work hard. Nothing's going to come easy. 
So I guess going to Oshkosh really didn't bother me. I just kind of played. And uh, I'm sure Delia Case could tell you a whole lot better stories than I could, and so could Graham Olson and Bill Berry. But I think just being around those guys at a very young age really helped. Considering the, the success that you've had after high school career, and you know you came from an era when maybe there wasn't that much success in Marshfield High School athletics, except maybe for tennis. Um, when you, from where you're standing now as a guy, as a professional sports figure, and you look at this program today and you see the success that this school has had in football and softball and other sports, how does that make you feel to see how? far the program has come over the years well very proud of this community very proud of what the senior high school and their teams have done I, you know and I I go back to what Raw Crow brought to the Marshall Columbus the heritage the history you know watching the Columbus teams and in this town at that time that was the staple. Wall Curl's team at Columbus was a staple and I was a big Wall Curl fan and watching his teams perform, watching his teams play and I think senior high not that they were behind at all in any of those things but at that time when I grew up in this town it was Wall Curl and the Columbus Dons football team and for me to watch that and watch this transfer over to Len Litke basically putting Marshall football back on the map Heidi Michaels bringing girls basketball back. I mean Hank Meyer did a great job at that time when we were playing I mean, certain coaches make differences, and I think it all does come back to the coaching and the people you surround yourself with and the tradition that you built. I didn't have a whole lot of tradition when I was going through school. It was tough because all the successes were so in the 30s, you know. Some things had happened in, in the 60s, but, you know, when you're going through in the 70s and you have nothing to really hold your hat on to, I mean, a state tournament bid for the boys' basketball team, I can remember, I think, in 74 or 75 with Ed Risto, that was the closest that we'd ever come to a state championship to be able to even go down to Madison, but how far they've come, I mean, Gary Kaler, the tennis program, uh, obviously our tennis program is back today a little bit, they're going to end up being in the state, but I'm very proud of the fact that the, what the boys baseball team did when my brother Dale was here, they went down to, to uh, win the conference and, and do some things. So basically, you know, at every program now, if you got the right coach and the right facilities, which we do here, the facilities are fantastic, you have a chance if you get the right kids out and some talent to do some things every year. So uh, very proud of what they've done at senior high. Obviously, the, the booster club, the things that they keep pouring money into and, and upgrading the, the weight room facility. And it's just fun to watch. And you wish sometimes you had had that same opportunity when you were going through. But times change. And just again be proud of the history that happened today a little bit for me is like a recall of you know my high school career what it really happened and uh it was fun to look back marshfield native and former major league outfielder gary varsho inducted into the marshfield tiger athletic hall of fame in the fall of 2008 this is gene delisio reporting for wdlb and wosq